two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bond Street, Bond Street, you're going to land at Bond Street. Eight. Bond Street with four hours, that's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Community chest. Wait right a minute, wait right a minute. Where were you? Strand. What a fifth, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. See? You jammy bleeder. <laughs> Property around that corner, Leicester Square, Coventry Street, Waterworks, Peccadilly, Regent Street, Oxford Street, and Bond Street. It's your birthday. Collect ten pounds from each player. Happy bleeding birthday. <laughs> you go. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Old gold. Mayfair, with a hotel on it, that's mine. Two thousand quid, that'll cost you. That's you, watch out. No, it's not, it's not. I can pay uh, one thousand, uh, eleven hundred, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, and fifty, uh, sixty, uh, seventy, five. You haven't got it. Sixty-six, sixty-seven. Six hundred and thirty-three pounds short. I'll, uh, how much would it give me for Vine Street? I don't want it. That's <laughs> will make the set-up. I don't want it. I bought the waterworks off you. That's your fault. I want the money. You'll have to sell some houses. You're right, little Shylock, aren't you, eh? I'm not selling my houses. I've worked too hard to get them. You'll have to sell your houses. I manage my own affairs and mind your own business. Because I shall mortgage Liverpool Street Station. One hundred pounds. Still three hundred and sixty-three pounds short. I'll sell you Coventry Street. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll sell me houses I then. I thought you would. <laughs> two houses off Bond Street and two houses off Regent Street. That is 400 quid off the price per house, right? Here you are. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. 17 quid change. <laughs> Thank you. Your go. Two. <laughs> One, two. Liverpool Street Station. You've just mortgaged it. <laughs> I'll get another go for throwing a double. Seven. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's two hundred pounds for passing go. Six, seven. Community chest. Proceed to the old Kent Road. <laughs> Four hundred pounds for passing go twice. <laughs> Honestly, if you was to buy a sewage farm, you'd strike natural gas. <laughs> I mean, you can't compete against luck like that. That ain't luck, it's skill. Oh, that would be ridiculous. I mean, you ain't landed on one finger, mine yet. Every time I come round, wallop, Mayfair, 2,000 nicker. Well, you should have bought it. Well, you had the chance. Well, I couldn't afford it, could I? I spent all my money putting my houses on Bond Street. Yeah, you don't know how to play the game. Here you go. The postman. I'll have my go in a minute. Don't you touch nothing. <laughs> I know exactly how much money I've got. Seventeen quid. <laughs> That's funny. What? That's a crowd commissioners. What do you got to allow for a crowd commission? What are you only right to ask for? Well, unless they've written the letter on the back of the envelope, you'll have to open it to find out, won't you? <laughs> to the occupiers, Muse Cottage, Old Drum Lane. The occupiers? I thought we owned the place. We do. We've got a 99 year lease. How long have we had it? Let's see. My grandfather bought it in uh, 18... Uh, 99 years. <laughs> and it's expired. Look, three months' notice of termination of lease. What do they mean? It means we're going to be booted out. 
I didn't know nothing about this. I thought we owned this place. No, at least all it is. Crown property. The Queen owns it. The Queen? <laughs> she owns... She owns the house and the yard and the stable and the sweet shop next door and the Indian restaurant across the street. Well, she want an Indian restaurant for? I don't suppose she knows it's an Indian restaurant. I've never seen her in there. <laughs> It wasn't always an Indian restaurant. It's part of her property. It was wished on her. Now, th this land round here has been in her family for centuries. So, all these years, she has been our landlady. <laughs> yeah. If I'd have known that, I'd have put him for an indoor car seat. If that's her letting us live in conditions like this, I bet her corgis live better than we do. <laughs> Don't suppose she knows. I mean, she's property all over the place. You can't expect her to keep up with everything. That's why the Crown Commissioners look after it for a... I mean, you couldn't expect her to be round here once a week with a rent book, could you? A rent book? I've been conned. What do you mean? All these years you've been dangling this place before me. You kept me on a bit of string. You said that when you die, all this would be mine. And it's not. It's hers. You lied to me. I didn't. Oh, I forgot. Ninety-nine years is a long time. I've wasted my life in this rat hole. And I've got nothing. My inheritance is right at the spout. I've got nowhere to live. Nothing. Perhaps if he wrote to her nicely, she'd let her stay on. I mean, I don't expect she needs it. Not right in the way. Unless she wants it for a grace and favour, please. A grace and favour? <laughs> It'd have to be a pretty rotten five to give someone a place like this. Three months? Yeah, Is that three all we've months. Got? No, hang on. There's a bit more. How? Oh. What? We are directed to inform you that as sitting tenants, you are to be given the opportunity of purchasing the freehold. Oh. She's selling off, is she? Oh, poor woman. She must need the money. <laughs> That's Harold Wilson's fault, keeping us short. <laughs> Now she has to sell all her houses just same as you did just now. Shame. How much do you want for it? 750 quid. That's not bad. That's very reasonable. I can see her point. Sell three of these a year and then he won't have to give up his polo, will he? <laughs> it's cheap, Harold. It, well worth it, I think we ought to buy. What well, with this? We have got 750 pence. But you're, you're marvellous, ain't you, eh? eh? You own half a London when you're playing this. You're brilliant. A right little Charlie Clow. You got more property than she has. Can we get down to the real bricks and mortar? And we haven't even got a pot to spit it. <laughs> I'll write and tell her I'm an old soldier. Oh, shut up. It's got nothing to do with her. It's only Colt Crown property. Belongs to the government, in actual fact. Oh. So it is Harold Wilson. Oh, God. <laughs> well, it's him that wants us out. He knows I vote Tory. He's rigging the boundaries again. He wants all us Tories in one ghetto. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Look, Father, do you think we could have one conversation without bringing Harold Wilson into it? I've changed my mind. I'm not going to buy. If he's asking 750, you can bet your bottom dollar it's not worth 300. Look, it's a snipper, 750. I mean, this must be worth three or four thousand. The site alone's worth that. It has got to be. 750 quid. Oh, where the hell are we going to get that kind of money? It's easy enough in this game. The bank gives it to you. Yeah, well, we're not playing this. What did you say? I said the bank gives it to you. That's it. We'll get it from a bank. How are we going to get it from a bank? We don't even have a bank account. Then we'll open one. How much you got? 50, Bob. And uh, me this week's pension. I've got a fiver. Yeah, that's it. That's all you only need. Ten quid to open the bank account. So, we go in there, give him ten quid, and ask him for 750. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you must be crackers. He'd show us out. No, he won't. That's what banks is for. That's how they exist, by lending money. Are oh, you seen it on the telly? The wife says, oh, how can I buy a new hat and a gas stove? She opens the cupboard door, there's the manager sitting there. <laughs> no problem, he says. You open the cart with me and you can have the lot. Yeah, you don't believe that rubbish, do you? There's a squeeze on, mate. You won't get a penny out of them. Look, I don't know much about banks, but I do know a bit about Charlie Miller. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what a villainy is? He has got a thousand pound overdraft at 29 different branches. What? He waits until the new manager goes in, then he's straightened out with a phony business proposition, he cops his thousand and he's off. Yeah, but he's got the gift of the gab. Look, we'll put on our best suits, we goes down to the bank, and we gives him a legitimate business proposition for deeds of this property against his loan. Yes. Well, we might have to move him up a bit. You know, give him a bit of the old sauce, make him feel a bit important. But Charlie told me that he has got geezers on a score a week scouring London for new managers. And he says the one that has just moved into the branch on the green is the right carrot. <laughs> He's straight up from Somerset. He don't even know what day it is. Yeah, but the Charlie's been in there before. He ain't been in there. He's saving him. He's a virgin. So that's going to be Do you think he'd do us first? Well, if he doesn't, we will ask him for ten quid's worth of shillings for the gas meter, turn it on and turn it in. <laughs> it's either that or we're out on the streets. Now, which do you prefer, Bond Street or Bow Street? Well, you don't own either of them. Here, let's finish this game off. Yes. It's your go. All right. Height. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chance. A chance card. I'm in with a chance. Advance to my fail. <laughs> <laughs> Two thousand quid, please. <laughs> Cobblers! Uh, please take a seat, gentlemen. The manager has a customer with him. They shouldn't be long. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah it's very Charlie well. Miller. Yeah, very well. Yeah, very nice to have met you, Mr. Woods. I hope we do a lot more business together. Yeah. I'll pick you up tomorrow night, 8 o'clock in the Wolds. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. hey, Charlie, have you. Two grand, no bother. A right carrot. I'm taking him to Covent Garden, introducing him to New Ref. Do you know New Ref? I will by tomorrow. <laughs> uh, the manager will see you now, gentlemen. Is it worth it? Have you left anything? Yeah, plenty, plenty for all of us. A right carrot. Keep you sweet. Plenty of bunny. For the lettuce, sir. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. Come in. Please sit down. What can I do for you? We want to buy it! <laughs> My partner and I are considering transferring our account here. Oh, are you? Oh, that is good news. Uh, just for a trial period, you understand? Uh, we are going through an agonizing reappraisal of our finances. And if we find that the service here is satisfactory, we may decide to keep our account here. Oh, splendid. And where's your account at the moment? The post office. It... <laughs> In a numbered account, of course. I see. You have never had a bank account. Oh, no, no, no. no. We are an old-fashioned firm, and my partner, who is also my father, has never trusted banks ever since the Wall Street crash. <laughs> oh, really? And, but what with the extensive modernization taking place and the expansive mood of the firm at the moment, nay, indeed, of the market generally. I have finally persuaded him to put our business on a more orthodox footing. Very wise. And what is the nature of your business? We're ragged about! <laughs> I beg your pardon, Peter. We are in the metal recovery business. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, an expanding industry and saving the country millions of valuable dollars on the import of raw materials. Oh, yes, indeed. That is us. Millions. Uh, we're expecting the Queen's Award for Industry at any moment. <laughs> good, good. And uh, how much did you wish to open the account with? Eleven pound ten. <laughs> oh, is that all? In the number one account. It's direct as petty cash, you understand. Oh, we will, of course, be opening a deposit account later. 
I see, yes. Well, now, the first thing to do is to sign this form. Specimen signature's just there, and I shall fill out your first deposit. Eleven pounds ten, you said. Yes. Uh, what name does the business trade under? Skepto and Son. Limited? Very. <laughs> what my father means is that we have not yet gone public. Though this is at the back of my mind, it's a very distinct possibility. When our accountants think that the time is right for us to apply to the stock exchange for quotation, we will, of course, let you in on the ground floor at par. I shall send you the pink forms. Thank you very much. Stipto and son, £11.10. Right now, if you'd like to give me the money, I'll deposit this straight away. A five, a six, a seven, eight, a nine, a ten, eleven, a... <laughs> and ten shillings. <laughs> Thank you very much. And you're going to ask him for the conkers? Later. First of all, he wants a specimen. Well, he's had that. <laughs> I've just been. A specimen signature. Now, sign that and behave yourself. We are here to try and impress him, you know. I'm afraid it's only uh, 11 pounds, 9 and 6 months. Oh, you know, hold on. I, uh, I think I have another splazy in here. Here you are. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's splendid. Right, well, now there's your checkbook, and here's some bank literature. Oh, thank you. Pay the Crown Commissioners 750. <laughs> oh, Miss Mary, deposit this, will you? Yes, certainly, sir. <laughs> thank you. Oh, she's got a big overdraft, hasn't she? <laughs> He has a card, isn't he? Yes, well, business is good. That's my second new account today. Congratulations. Oh. Yes, yourselves and the chap who was in here just before you. Mr. Miller, a charming man. Do you know, I happened to mention that I was keen on the ballet and straight away invited me to Covent Garden tomorrow. So he's going to introduce me to Nureyev. Oh, he will, he will. And Margaret Fontana, I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yes, I place great store on personal contacts with my customers. I mean, you wouldn't believe it, but some people come in here off the street, open a bank account, and straight away they expect to borrow vast sums of money. There, I told you good not So they really? Well, it's just not on, is it? Isn't it? No, no. I mean, it's different if you know the client, met him socially, and got to know what makes him tick, so to speak. It goes a long way with me. Would you like to have dinner with us one night? Delighted. How about this evening? Huh? <laughs> oh, right. Where shall we go? Oh, well, there's a very lovely little Indian restaurant just opposite. Uh, uh, no, 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 I don't think so. I'm nothing against them, of course. Some of my best customers are Indians, but I don't like the food, if I may say so, without being prosecuted. Uh -huh. Skinner's Arms said you were nice shepherd's pie. No, no, no. Wait, uh, wait a minute. I know a place. We've heard so much about it up in the provinces. I've always wanted to go there. Yes. Excellent here, Mr. Septo. I hope you didn't mind me bringing my wife. No, no, not at all. It's a great pleasure to see such a big eater. <laughs> I did enjoy the caviar. It's the first time I've tasted it. Oh, the beluga, yes. Oh. Was it very expensive? Oh, no, no, no. There's about two quid a spoonful, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> The pheasant was delicious. Quite the best I've ever tasted. Oh, good, good, I'm glad. What were your scrambled eggs like? <laughs> Very nice. I oh, thank you. You didn't order anything else, Mr. Steptoe. Is there something wrong? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm dieting. <laughs> He'll spot the old tummy trouble, you know. It's an ulcer, I think. Oh. <laughs> it's a precious a big business, you do understand. Well, I must say, this is a very splendid place you brought us to. Do you eat here often? Oh, yes, yes, we come here all the time. Oh, it's like a works canteen to us. <laughs> oh, look! Isn't that Michael Caine over there? Oh, yes. Hello, Mike. Oh, 
I don't think he recognised you. Hasn't got his glasses on. <laughs> oh, that's Paul Getty, isn't it? Oh. Probably. At these prices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. Is everything all right? Yeah. I like this place. I just picked up half a dollar in the bog. <laughs> sink and a bloke come up and asked me to brush him down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like a bleeding penguin in this one. You sit down, father. Did you manage to get all the cocoa off your trousers, Peter? Yeah. Some of it got into me fly hole. <laughs> Off. Well, I do hope you left the place as we would wish to find it. <laughs> Please adjust your dress underneath your napkin, Dad, that our lady's present. I'm glad it wasn't curry, though. That would have made me hop about a bit. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Would you care to order dessert? Oh, yeah. Sure. Mrs. Wood? Oh, not for me, thank you very much. I couldn't manage anything else. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wood? Uh, no, thank you. Enough is sufficient unto the day there. Oh. Look, dear, George Brown. No, I shan't have any. Either. I like them. You can't have any. I want some pudding. <laughs> Look, you've had five courses already. You can't count the salmon moose. One burp and you're empty. I'm hungry. There's <laughs> plenty of bread and jam at home. I want something now. You're going to get it in a minute. Right round the year old. <laughs> That will be all, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Another bottle of wine, sir? No, no, no. Just the bill, please. Yes, sir. Uh, cigars, gentlemen. Oh, yes, please. I'd love one. Uh, we have Corona, Romeo and Juliet, Upman's. I think thank you. I, I, I have got some. I do try one of these. They're a bit small, but I think you will like them. I have them made specially. They won't get so bored with them big things after a meal. They seem to go on forever, don't you think? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, very nice. Shall I cut it for you, sir? <laughs> well, get out of it. I'm just going to go. <laughs> Your bill, sir. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Twenty-five quid? Well, that's very reasonable. <laughs> yes, yes. That's just what I was thinking. <laughs> Will you take a check? Certainly, sir. <laughs> oh. Let me write it, Harold. I haven't written a check before. No, no, I'm going to write it. <laughs> Hey, Mrs. Do you want that bread? <laughs> Go bless you, Mrs. Hey, you got any butter there? <laughs> Are you going to finish that ham? Yes, I finished. Oh, good. I'll have it. <laughs> hey, that looks good. I haven't finished yet. Well, as you can't finish, you know where I am. <laughs> what the hell are you up to? <laughs> you must have bleeding wounds. <laughs> I do apologise for my father. He, he's just returned from Africa. <laughs> he's a missionary with ox for him. He does hate to see food wasted when it's... <laughs> Oh, well, he is a card, isn't he? <laughs> he loves embarrassing people. It's his sense of humour, you know. All these rich eccentrics, they're all the same, aren't they? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I, um, I hope you realise you're now £13.10 overdrawn on your current account. Are we? Not to worry. I've given a lot of thought to the proposition you put to me during dinner. I don't think there's going to be any trouble at all. I should be delighted to give you overdraft facilities of 750. Really? Did you hear that, Peter? He's going to give us the conkers. Conkers? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, I always like to cooperate with our more respected customers. Oh, that is marvellous. Would you like a cognac? No, thank you. I'm driving. No, so are we, and she ain't got any labs. Oh. <laughs> Was everything to your satisfaction, oh, madame, uh, monsieur? Oh, very good indeed, as always. My compliments to the chef. May I suggest you finish off your evening with a visit to our gaming rooms on the first floor? Uh, roulette, blackjack, chemin de fer? No, no, I don't think so. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, gambling. Let's have a go. No. 
Oh, come on. I haven't played roulette since before the war. 1919, Army of Occupation. I was in Cologne, and I went into a casino, and I won 29 million marks. Good heavens, how much was that worth? 32 and a tanner. <laughs> I've always been lucky at gambling. No, we're not going. Oh, come on, it might be rather amusing at that. I know I shouldn't be a bank manager, but uh, perhaps for half an hour or so. Everything's all right in moderation. Yeah, come on, let's take them to the cleaners. There you are, my dear. Five pounds, we'll stay until we've lost that. Come on, Mr. Stepto. Yes, <laughs> for what? Now. Just for half an hour, then. Thank Diamond, Jim. Now you behave yourself. I know you once you get to the bit between the teeth. That is not Monopoly money you're playing with now. Don't worry about me, mate. I've never lost at gambling yet. By the time I've finished with them here, we'll be dining here every night. The horse and all. <laughs> Lead me to it. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, here you are. Uh, keep the change. Eh? <laughs> Come in here, you. <laughs> you great, big, stupid, twine-toed, cross-eyed, stupid, bigoted twit! <laughs> Look. Pay the Mayfair Sporting Club 745 quid. Why couldn't you leave when they left, eh? They only blew a fiver. What's he going to say when that slides across his table tomorrow morning? Well, it wasn't my fault that the table was rigged. I thought you said you knew how to play the game. I do. Liar! The one time your nimble did come up, you shouted out, House! <laughs> <laughs> 25 quid for the grub. Three pound ten for the hour of the suit. It's going to cost me 770 quid to pay back 750. <laughs> now, where's the sense in that? I've got 30 bob left with to buy the free owl. I'm going to have to borrow £1,518.10 to get back to where we were this morning before the postman arrived. Perhaps if we rode up to the palace and asked her for time to pay. Oh, shut up. It's got nothing to do with her. I wouldn't mind, but I didn't even see the money. I got it from him as we left one table. It was gone by the time we got to the other table. Oh, Harold, what are we going to do? I'm too old to be kicked out of my home. How are we going to get the money? I'm going to go out to Charlie Miller's and get a list of his carrots. <laughs> and if, if that doesn't succeed, there's only one thing we can do. What's that? Get the Queen down here and Prince Philip for a game of Monopoly. <laughs> Give us an old drum line, 1,500 quid. Good night. <laughs>